Today is Saturday of the 33rd week in ordinary time. As usual, we'll begin with the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of the faithful, and enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and they shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant by the same Spirit who may be truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, our first reading is taken from the first book of Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 1 to 13. In those days, King Antiochus was going through the upper provinces when he heard that Eleamas in Persia was a city famed for its wealth in silver and gold. Its temple was very rich, containing golden shields, breastplates, and weapons left there by Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian king who first reigned over the Greeks. So he came and tried to take the city and plunder it. But he could not, because his plan became known to the men of the city, and they withstood him in battle. So he fled and in great grief departed from there to return to Babylon. Then someone came to him in Persia and reported that the armies which had gone into the land of Judah had been routed, that Lysias had gone first with a strong force but had turned and fled before the Jews, that the Jews had grown strong from the arms, supplies and abundant spoils which they had taken from the armies they had cut down, that they had torn down the abomination which he erected upon the altar in Jerusalem, and that they had surrounded the sanctuary with high walls as before, and also Bethso, his city. Then, when the king heard this news, he was astounded and badly shaken. He took to his bed and became sick from grief because things had not turned out for him as he had planned. He lay there for many days because deep grief continually gripped him and he concluded that he was dying. So he called all his friends and said to them, Sleep departs from my eyes, and I am downhearted with worry. I said to myself, To what distress have I come? And into what a great flood I now am plunged, for I was kind and beloved in my power, but now I remember the evils I did in Jerusalem. I seized all her vessels of silver and gold, and I sent to destroy the inhabitants of Judah without good reason. I know that it is because of this that these evils have come upon me. And behold, I am perishing of deep grief in a strange land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our experiential psalm today is taken from Psalm 9, verse 2 to 3, verse 4, and verse 6, verse 16, and verse 19. Our response is, I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. All your wonders I will confess. I will rejoice in you and be glad and sing psalms to your name, O Most High. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. See how my enemies turn back, how they stumble and perish before you. You have rebuked the nations, destroyed the wicked. You have wiped out their name forever and ever. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. The nations are fallen in the pit which they have made. Their feet have been caught in the snare they laid. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hopes of the poor ever perish. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. Our gospel acclamation today is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. It reads, Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Hallelujah. Our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 20, verse 27 to 40. Luke 20, 27 to 40. It reads, At that time, there came to Jesus some Sadducees, those who say that there is no resurrection. And they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, having a wife but no children, the man must take the wife and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and died without children, and the second and the third took her, and likewise all seven left no children and died. Afterward, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had her as wife. And Jesus said to them, The sons of this age marry and are given in marriage, for they cannot die any more, because they are equal to angels and are the sons of God, being sons of the resurrection, but that the dead are raised. Even Moses showed in the passage about the bush, where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now he is not God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. And some of the scribes answered, Teacher, you have spoken well, for they no longer dead to ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary. Happy weekend to you all. Thank you, as always, for joining our daily reflection, our daily reflections broadcast. Today, we come to the end of the book of uh, our reading of Mark Abbey's. From next week, uh, Monday, 
we shall be moving on to uh, the book of Daniel. Finally, we see the end of the evil king Antiochus Epiphanes, who felt he was greater than God. We finally come to his gruesome or his uh, shameful end. You know the thing about choosing money over God. The thing about worshipping the things of this world is that you can never be satisfied. St. Augustine says, Our hearts are restless until they rest in God. Only God can bring us true satisfaction. If we choose to worship mammon, if we choose to worship riches over God, there is no way we can ever find satisfaction for our hearts. Despite all that King Antiochus Epiphanes had gathered for himself, when he heard of a city called Eliamas in the country of Persia, he felt he was good enough to plunder it because of the riches, because of the gold and silver that was left there by King Alexander, the first ruler of the Greeks. Unfortunately for him, when he made attempt to plunder the city, he was unsuccessful. This brought him to shame, and he went into hiding in a small country. Then he heard that the Jews had recovered back the city of Jerusalem, that they had defeated the army he sent to plunder them. It was a double defeat for King Antiochus Epiphanes. And it was when he realized that he had been reduced to nothing. That is when his conscience struck him. I wonder how we human beings tend to behave when we do things that are bad our conscience does not prick us. It is only when we begin to see the consequences of our evil deeds, that is when our conscience, which was dead before, suddenly becoming alive, reminding us of what we had done. King Antiochus Epiphanes felt he was God. He felt he could kill anybody. Remember what he did to the seven brothers and their mother. How he slaughtered them all in the presence of their mother. That was just one out of the many episodes of his killings. Destroying the people for no just cause. For no just cause because he felt he could receive protection from his gods. His gods made with silver and stone, wood and iron. How sad. Finally, he came to realize that all those evil deeds he did, he was going to pay for it. St. Paul would tell us that the wages of sin, the only reward of sin is death. Children of God, do not give up. That is a message for us today. Do not give up on God. When it seems as if your enemies are succeeding, don't worry. God is still on the throne. When it seems as if evil is reigning, don't worry. Don't stop being good. Do not give up your faith in God. You see, Wicked people may only last for a while, but God is always on the throne. God may be giving them a second chance. God may be giving them time to repent. But with time we come when God's justice will prevail. 
The enemy will never succeed forever. The wicked will never succeed forever. Their time will come when they will all have to pay for their evil deeds. Wickedness does not last forever. Do not join the bad wagon. All in the name of, oh, I am the only one left out. Dare to be different. Dare to stand out. Don't worry. God will fight for you. Don't worry. God will fight for you. For now, it seems as if the wicked are succeeding. But God knows what he is doing. Do not give up hope in God. Continue to trust God. Continue to sing and pray his praises like Paul and Silas who were thrown into praising. Our responsorial psalm today says, The nations are falling in the pit which they made. That is what will become of our enemies. When they try to pull us down, they will fall into the pit that they have made. For their feet have been caught in the snare they laid. Antiochus Epiphanes laid a snare for the people of Israel. But thank God for Matatias. Thank God for Judah. These were people that allowed themselves to be used by God. These were men of courage who fought back, who did not simply sit down, who were fired by holy anger when they saw evil going on. And God supported them as they battled against the armies of King Antiochus Epiphany. The responsorial psalm says, For the needy shall not always be forgotten. You see, you may have been praying for so many years, like the woman who has suffered from the issue of blood for many years. But don't worry, God will not forget you. Don't worry, it may seem like everything is bleak and gloomy right now. It may seem as if your prayers are not working. Don't give up. Continue to pray, for the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hopes of the poor ever perish. The hopes of the poor will never perish. Stand for what is right. Stand for righteousness. Stand for holiness. Don't worry. No matter what you have to face from the hands of your enemies, God will fight for you. God will surely fight for you. Do not change camp. Do not give up on God. In our gospel passage today, there were some Sadducees who do not believe in the resurrection. That was their own school of thought. But what they did not know was that they did not understand what it meant to rise from the dead. For them, to rise from the dead is to continue living in another world like, just like this. And that is why they brought a question to Jesus about a woman who married, whose husband died, leaving no children, and then the brother of the husband married her, hoping to have children, and there was no children. He also died, leaving no children. And then the second, the third, the fourth, all seven brothers married one woman. All of them died. None of them had any child for this woman. Eventually, the woman herself died. And then the question brought to Jesus was, Whose wife will she be in the resurrection? And Jesus Christ made them to understand that in the resurrection, we shall not have this flesh again, because this flesh will be buried under the ground, but there is something that continues to live in us forever, which is our soul. Jesus Christ told them that the soul continues to live. The soul is like a pure spirit, and spirits do not eat. Spirits do not have flesh. Spirits do not marry. 
So in the resurrection, we shall be like the angels, and there will be no need to marry, because we will not have this flesh anymore. So you see, the reason the Sadducees could not stomach the resurrection of the dead was because of their false understanding of what it meant to rise from the dead. Today you see Christians arguing about Christian doctrines. This is what you believe, this is what you teach in your church. Oh, your doctrines are wrong. At times this argument occur as a result of the failure to understand what the other person is saying. A lot of Catholic doctrines today, people do not understand. Some Christians of other denominations do not understand some Catholic doctrines. And then they argue that, oh, you people are not worshipping God. You people are doing this, you people are doing that. All because they fail to understand. That lack of understanding can lead to argument. Just imagine the Sadducees arguing with Jesus over the resurrection of the dead. And Jesus Christ said, yes, the dead rise again. The dead will rise again. Because Jesus he even went as far as quoting from the Bible and saying to them that Moses in the burning bush addressed God as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Jesus Christ said, he is God not of the dead, but of the living, because all live to him, all are alive to him, all are alive to him. And the Sadducees got the message, and we are told that they did not further argue with Jesus again. No one dared to ask him any more questions. Children of God, stand by what is right. Stand by holiness. God will fight for you. Even if God does not fight for you in this life, remember that there is a resurrection of the dead. There is another life. Blessed are you when you are persecuted, when you are insulted, when you are called all kinds of names. On my account, rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. Death is not the final full stop to our life. Death is not the end of our life. Death is only a transition to another life, a better life. Above all, in all of what we have said today, children of God, things may be rough and difficult for you right now. People may have insulted you and called you names. You may have suffered from different blessings and from different people, all because of your faith. Don't worry. God is not dead. God is not sleeping. Wicked people will not last forever. God is doing something for you. God is fighting your battle. You may not see it, but it's happening already. There is hope for you. Just keep hoping in God. Just keep trusting in God. Continue to walk in the light. Continue to keep his commandments. One day, you too shall laugh. Even if it's not in this life, even if it's in the life to come, don't worry. For your good deeds, joy awaits you in the end. May God bless his words in our hearts. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you. Do have a lovely weekend ahead. See you again, same time, same place, tomorrow, God willing.